Now this video is going to take you through a couple of the more advanced chart types in Microsoft Excel. We'll talk about why they're useful and some of the limitations and drawbacks you'll run into when creating them. Now there's a couple of nice little ones in the new versions of Excel. One of them that I like is actually called Histogram. So a histogram might be familiar to you from a stats class at some point, but basically it helps in situations where you have a lot of data. So if you look at the list I have here, you'll see that this column A has a whole bunch of data. If I take that and try and chart it, I'm not going to get a good result. Let me show you what happens. I'm going to go insert and just do a normal bar chart. If you look at it, it's just garbage. You can't really tell much with it. And the major problem is that there's just so many different options on here that it's hard to look at it. So what a histogram does, it takes all of these values and puts them into buckets. And then it only graphs the buckets for you. You could do it manually by adding a new column and doing a round function or some basic math on it, but histogram makes it just easier and more efficient to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that chart and we're gonna go ahead and make a histogram. So I'm gonna to go to insert and choose my histogram option. Now with the histogram, you'll see it looks a lot like a regular bar chart. The difference though is that each of these bars don't represent a single point. Instead, it's basically a bucket that collects all the values inside. If I look at the bottom here, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see these more plainly. You'll see that each of these tells us where the bucket starts and where the bucket stops. Excel will automatically create these for you, but I like to tweak them a little bit myself. So you see here that this bucket goes from 5 to 7.3. This one goes from right above 7.3 to 9.6, and then on and on. Now we can tweak this by double clicking and going into the histogram options. So I double click and I have the option over here on the right called series. At the moment, my bands are set to auto, which means Excel is gonna pick it for me. But I can actually choose other options too. Let's say I wanted to have a certain number of bins. So I'm gonna choose a certain number. Let's say I want seven. So once I click that, you'll see that I now have charts that have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bins. And again, looking at the data, you'll see that it shows me the range that I'm going to on the bottom there. So that's one option you could do. Another option is to say how big should each bin be? Let's say I want each bin to be exactly three. So now this bin goes from five to eight, this one from eight to 11, and so on and so forth. Now you notice that as I change the number of bins, the shape of this does change a lot. So you have to be kind of careful. It's, you, the, uh, the size of the bins does have a major effect upon how the chart looks. But it's great when you have a lot of data that is too fine to be able to put into a regular bar chart. Let's do another one. The next type of chart is called a scatter plot. Now a scatter plot looks a lot like a regular line, but has a couple of interesting quirks to it that makes it more useful. Now if you look at this, I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to create a basic line chart. So if I go to insert and choose to do a standard 2D line chart, you'll see I get two data series. One of them is going to be sales and one of them is going to be price. And when I look at these, you'll see that you can kind of see the relationship there. They seem to kind of move together, but it has a little bit of extra work for your audience because they had to sort of connect, make those connections themselves. And if the lines are really messy, it'll be harder to read it. A scatter plot does a better job of this. Let's show the difference. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to choose the scatter plot. And first I'm just going to do the one with dots. So what's happening here, and I'll make these larger so you can kind of see them a little bit better, is that I have this kind of the same data being shown, but now I'm using a two axes instead of just one. On the one on the left, which is my standard lines, you'll notice that I've got two data series, the blue and the red. Each of the numbers down here simply says one, two, three, four. It's basically counting the number of items I have. So every time I go down a row, it moves over by one, 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 one. On the right though, what I'm doing is I have one series of data is vertical axis and the other series is on the horizontal axis. In other words, if I look back at it, you'll see that this point right here, this one has $10 worth of sales and $3 worth of price. And so it's gonna go here on the sales axis and here on the price axis. 
So let's, let, this really helps you to see how strong a relationship there is between the two things. Whereas this basic line chart made it a little bit more difficult to see that information. On this chart, we can also change the chart type and add in lines. So I'm gonna go back to scatter and I can add a sort of a gentle line here. And now it's not perfect, but you can kind of see there's a pretty strong relationship between the two items that we have here. So that's a scatter plot. Scatter plots are good to practice with. The biggest thing is just to make sure you have two axes. One axis is going to be for sales. The other axis is going to be for price. And you can do the same thing we've done before in switching those to make it change perspective as well. But generally speaking, just go ahead and add a scatter plot and make sure you have the X and the Y set correctly. All right, next kind of chart is called the waterfall chart. Waterfall charts look, again, a lot like bars, but they have one crucial difference. The difference is that the first value is an actual value, and all the other ones are going to be changes off of the previous. In other words, for the example that I have here, January starts with $80 worth of sales. In February, February doesn't have $20 of sales. Instead, it's going to have a 20% increase, or 100 March has a $20 decrease, so we're going to get 80 plus 20 minus 20. We're back down to where we started again. April goes down even further. So again, so that's the key thing here. You have to use the difference for everything except for the first one. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. I'm going to go insert, and I'm going to click waterfall. So on the waterfall chart now, you can see this really emphasizes the change each time. All the positive changes are shown in blue, and the negative changes are shown in red. And the height of the overall bar is still accurate. So if I look at the second bar here, I can see I have a series called 20, but it's being plotted against the 100 on the side. That way, looking at this chart, you can quickly see, oh yeah, we added, or we have a difference of 20 this month, which gives us a total of 100. The same thing happens for March. I have a difference, I'm gonna go down this time, and go back down to 80. Or on the next month, I have another difference of a negative 30, and then I increase back up. So this is really key for when we're trying to emphasize the change in each thing, and I'm trying not to clutter up the chart. You could do this exact same chart with bars, from here to here or from here to here, but this can be a cleaner way of showing the same information. Now the last kind of chart I wanna emphasize here are combo charts. Combo charts are incredibly useful because they help us connect two data series where one uses big numbers and one uses small numbers. So if you look at the data that I'm displaying before you, I can see that sales in January is a big number, 100, 20, 40, 120, 180, 90, but margin is a very small number, 10%, 20%, 5%. If I just create a standard bar chart here, you'll quickly see it's not readable. So I can see the big numbers, the sales, 100, 20, 40, all that kind of thing, but the margin is so small you can't actually see it anywhere on the chart. It's being plotted, and if I made this big enough, you would actually see it pop out a little bit, but for right now, it's such a small number, it just doesn't, not visible at all. The way we're going to make this one is with a combo chart. Combo charts allow us to combine two different kinds of charts together, a line and a bar. So I'm going to click on this combo button, and you'll see it has a bar here and a line here. And that's the key thing behind this. And you can do this other ways too, like you can use an area chart as well. There's a lot of different options, but let's just do the basic one first. So now I have my combo chart. I have one data series being shown with a bar, which is the sales number, and I have a second data series being shown with a line, which is the red line there. Now there's one other thing you really need to make this useful. The last step is to plot the margin on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. In other words, the numbers over here are really big numbers. I'm never gonna be able to see the line if I look at the big numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and make a second axis on the right-hand side. The way I do this is I need to click on the line. Now, this can be kind of awkward sometimes, and if you're having trouble finding the line to click on it, it can be really frustrating. The way that I do it, if you can't find the line to click on, is to go to the Format ribbon. 
Once you're on the format ribbon, you have this little drop down. This drop down is a really handy way to grab things you can't seem to find anywhere on the chart. So you see right now I'm selecting the plot area. But what I really want is that margin data series, which is the percentages. Once I select margin, you'll see I have little selection markers now. So even though I couldn't click on it, I could find it by clicking on the drop down and selecting it there. The next thing I need to do is go to the properties. And if they're not open, you can go ahead and double click now that you have a selection. And that'll open them up. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the far right option that says plot series on. Right now it's defaulting to primary axis, which is the axis I have on the left here. What I want though is I want a new axis on the right or numbers over here as well. So I'm going to change it to secondary axis. Now once I do that, the line pops up higher. It goes higher because now I can use the axis on the right to see. I'll make this a little bigger so you can see the numbers here. So now the line is going on this side and the bars are going on the side over here. And now I can actually compare big numbers and small numbers together using the same chart. Now just remember though, when you do this, it's generally a good idea to have the line go towards the right and the bars go towards the left. Just sort of a convention. You also want to use lines for percentages or kind of the smaller numbers and use bars for the bigger numbers. Again, not like a hard and fast rule, but just a good guideline to go with as you make these. All right, go ahead and take a minute or two and try and make each of these four charts on the data that I provided for you.